Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. And well, great. Welcome to a very special event this morning. Uh, it's really great to see such see and hear such an enthusiastic crowd. Now, if Jenna and I can get that kind of reception, I can only imagine what the special guest is going to get. As you know, President Obama is on his fourth trip to Korea. That is a very clear indication of the importance of our alliance with Korea. And you should all be very proud of your contributions to strengthening that special partnership between our two countries. The President's visit is going very well, thanks to all of the hard work and dedication of so many American and Korean colleagues at the Embassy and the Command. Uh, so let me take this opportunity to thank all of you for your support for this very important visit. Uh, let me also single out our control officer at the Embassy, Mary Tarnovka, for the outstanding the job that she's done on the visit. Now, it is my pleasure and privilege to invite uh, my colleague and partner, General Scarpari, to introduce our very special guest. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Ambassador Rice, uh, the diplomats that are here from the Embassy, soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, the civilians that work so hard along our side here with us in the command, and of course the families of U.S. Forces Korea. It's uh, my honor today to introduce our Commander-in-Chief, who, as the Ambassador said, is no stranger to Korea. This is his fourth visit to Korea since taking office, which really underscores the importance of the region and the importance he places upon you and the work that you do here on behalf of our country. He understands this mission. I want you to know that uh, I'm proud of you as well, you and your families, that you've made the sacrifice here to uh, defend this country as well as our interests, and I appreciate it very much. I want to thank briefly Ms. Mackenzie Rowe from the Embassy and Sergeant Major Greg Weekly from CFC, as well as uh, Mr. Tim Higgs from MWR and Tony Davis from USO for the great support in helping us put this together. We have a great team here with USFK and the Embassy, and I appreciate it very much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a warm welcome of the President of the United States, President Barack Obama. Good to be back with the young son, Garrison. Uh, I want to thank one of our military's most tested, trusted leaders for that outstanding introduction, General Mike Scaparotti. Now, I I've, I've been told, I don't know if you've heard this story, that years ago, Scap was actually an extra in a movie about the, uh, the Battle of Incheon, the turning point of the Korean War. So it's only fitting that after a career uh, of proud service that's taken him from West Point to Iraq to Afghanistan, he is now commander of U.S. Forces, Forces Korea. And we could not be prouder of his effort. He's got a great partner in our other representative, Ambassador Kim, a proud Korean-American for strengthening the rock-solid alliance between the United States and the Republic of Korea. Give Ambassador Kim a big round of applause. All of you have helped keep this alliance the linchpin of security and stability in the Asia-Pacific. The Eighth Army is in the House. The Seventh Air Force is in the House. 
U.S. Naval Forces Korea, U.S. Marine Forces Korea, Special Operations Command. We've got our outstanding DOD civilians. And we have our wonderful U.S. Embassy staff here as well. Yes, good job, VA, in the house. And I know, and I know, you know, we've got some outstanding spouses and and family members, kids, in the house. And and I want to. <laughs> And I want to thank you as well, because uh, you bear the burdens of service as well, whether it's separation from a loved one or uh, transitioning to a, a new country. And I just want you to know that America is grateful for your sacrifice and your service. Now, President Park and I just attended a briefing uh, led by uh, General Scaparotti with the Combined Forces Command. And then I signed the guest book that sits on top of a table where the Korean War armistice was signed. And, and both of those moments drove home the truth that after more than 60 years, our alliance is as strong as it has ever been and as effective as it has ever been. And nowhere is that more evident than in the professionalism and the interoperability of our militaries. Even when Scap had to travel to Washington to testify before Congress last month, he was never more than a phone call or a teleconference away from Admiral Choi. And that's because our forces on duty here, American and Korean, are highly trained, closely coordinated, fit to fight tonight and every other night. But obviously, in addition to dealing with the threat from North Korea, this is also an alliance that represents the incredible bonds between peoples. So I know that you provided quick support in response to last week's terrible ferry tragedy, because we understood when our friends are in trouble, America helps. And, and our hearts are broken uh, for our Korean friends, especially the loss of so many wonderful young people. But we're inspired by the tales of heroism and selflessness the young woman who tried to make sure everyone else had a life jacket, even if it meant her own death. The man whose last words were, I'm on my way to save the kids. That's why America will continue to support every rescue and recovery effort. And it's that spirit that allows this alliance to endure. Kachi, kapshida. We go together. That's what we're about. That's what we're about. That's been our common commitment for more than 60 years, in good times and in bad. It was 1950, just five years after the end of World War II, when communist armies first crossed the 38th parallel. And at the time, many Americans couldn't place Korea on a map. But we knew, as much as we had already given, as wary as we were of war, that we had a stake in what happened here in the Korean Peninsula that we had to roll back the tide of communism, that as Americans, we had to stand with our South Korean friends. And then in September, the Americans arrived. The alliance we led with Korean troops landed in a surprise attack. And all told, nearly 1.8 million Americans would join the fight those next few years. The conditions were terribly difficult. The combat was brutal. The danger was close. By the end, nearly 37,000 Americans would give their last full measure of devotion on this faraway soil, but not without pushing the invading armies back across the line they had dared to cross. If you want to know what that hard-earned, long-defended victory looks like, you look around this country, the Republic of Korea. This country has risen from occupation and ruin and become one of the most vibrant and open democracies in the world. Seoul, the city that has sprung up around this garrison, leads one of the most advanced and dynamic economies in the world. When our veterans witness this nation's progress, 
When our veterans come here and see this great and modern country for themselves, they can say with pride their efforts and their sacrifice was worth it. They see the real results of what they've done. A South Korea that is a world leader and a true partner in Asian security and stability. They see a country like ours, where, child, uh, where children can not only have dreams, but those dreams are encouraged, and he or she can grow up to become Secretary General of the United Nations, or President of the World Bank, or even Ambassador from the U.S. to the country he was born in. None of this was an accident. Freedom is not an accident. Progress is not an accident. Democracy is not an accident. These are things that have to be fought for. And you're part of that legacy. They must be won, and they've got to be tended to constantly and defended without fail. And here on freedom's frontier, they are. By every man and woman who has served and stood sentinel on this divided peninsula. The 38th parallel now exists as much as a contrast between worlds as it does a border between nations, between a society that's open and one that is closed, between a democracy that is growing and a pariah state that would rather starve its people than feed their hopes and dreams. That's not the result of a war. That's the result of the path that North Korea has taken, a path of confrontation and provocation and pursuing the world's most dangerous weapons. And I want to be clear, the commitment that the United States of America has made to the security of the Republic of Korea only grows stronger in the face of aggression. Our alliance does not waver with each bout of their attention-seeking. It just gains the support of the rest of the world. North Korea's continued pursuit of nuclear weapons is a path that leads only to more isolation. It's not a sign of strength. Anybody can make threats. Anyone can move an army. Anyone can show off a missile. That doesn't make you strong. It does not lead to security or opportunity or respect. Those things don't come through force. They have to be earned. And real strength is allowing an open and participatory democracy where people can choose their own leaders and choose their own destiny. And real strength is allowing a vibrant society where people can think and pray and speak their minds as they please, even if it's against their leaders especially if it's against their leaders. Real strength is allowing free and open markets that have built growing, thriving middle classes and lifted millions of people out, out of poverty. We don't use our military might to impose these things on others, but we will not hesitate to use our military might to defend our allies and our way of life. So like all nations on Earth, North Korea and its people have a choice. They can choose to continue down a lonely road of isolation, or they can choose to join the rest of the world, seek a future of greater opportunity and greater security and greater respect, a future that already exists for the citizens on the southern end of the Korean Peninsula. And if they choose this path, America, and the Republic of Korea and the rest of the world will help them build that future. But if they do not, they should know that the commitment of the United States of America to the security and defense of the Republic of Korea has not wavered once in more than 60 years. It never has and it never will. This alliance is special, forged on the battlefield, and has been fortified by the common values and mutual interests and mutual respect of our peoples. The United States and Korea are more than allies. We are friends. And this foundation of trust and security and stability that allows both our nations to thrive economically and socially is made possible by the service and sacrifice of every one of you, our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, diplomats. You are the tip of the spear on freedom's frontier. You carry high the legacy left by all those who fought and served here. And to the family members both here in South Korea and awaiting your return back home, I thank you for your service as well. Because of that service, 
and the service of generations of service members and diplomats. Our country still stands, and our founding principles still shine. And nations around the world that once knew nothing but bitter tastes of fear now know the blessings of freedom. That's because of you. I could not be prouder to be your Commander-in-Chief. And now I'm going to come down and shake some hands and thank you in person. God bless you. God bless the Republic of Korea. God bless the United States of America. And God bless our alliance. Thank you.